everybody. Uh, my name is Nina Camplin and I'm the online arts facilitator for the VC Gallery for our online workshops. Going along with our theme for uh, September, we're looking at Carningley Mounting. Um, now this is a, a picture that I took when um, we took a v uh, trip up there with the VC Gallery and um, we went up there, a group of us went up to uh, the top of Carningley Mountain and this was the view across from the top of the mountain looking through some of the uh, rock outcrops there. Uh, I just want to say that a, a few things about um, this mountain. It's got a lot of um, myths and legends and history about the whole thing. Um, first of all, the name of it is um, tra translates as Angel Rock Mountain or the Mount of Angels. And it's said that if you spend a night on Carningley Mountain, you either become a poet or you go mad. So um, it's worth a try, I think. It's one of the largest hill forts in West Wales, dating back to um, the Iron Age. The, the lower slopes are covered in traces of Bronze, bronze Age settlements, and there are there is evidence of about 25 hut circles and um, several enclosures as well. So it's obviously been inhabited uh, many times throughout history. Uh, most recently, I think, is... Um, in, I think it's in the medieval um, era when there was a, a settlement on it which then became the subject of a load of books by Brian John called the Angel Mountain Saga and these were published between 2001 and 2012 and they're, they're set in um, the from 1776 I think the heroine was born her name was Martha Morgan of Plas Ingley and the, the mountain is her personal sanctuary. Anyway, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do a, a representation of this scene, this view across from the mountain. Um, it was uh, quite a hazy day. I mean, I have, um, I have manipulated this a little bit in Photoshop, so I've brought the contrast up, but I wanted it to make it look kind of mystical. And what I've done to start with is I have this, uh, this wrapping paper, which you probably can't see very well on, um, on the camera. But it's almost got like a holographic effect to it. If I move it and I bring it closer to the camera, you might be able to see it's kind of got a kind of pearlescent sheen to it, which changes colour with the light. So I've put a bit of that down, which I want to use for the, um, the background. If you want to have a similar effect, you could use a pearlescent paint or you could use a silver paper. You could probably put um, even a tin foil or something like that down just so that you can get a kind of um, reflection, some sparkle in it. So I'm going to start today by putting in the background. So what I've done, where I glued this down, I, I glued this down yesterday so it would be dry enough for me to work on. And then I've um, torn around the edges and sanded them down because I don't really want to get too much of an edge around the, uh, the side of the paper. But I would like to have little bits of this kind of showing through the paint. So I'm going to start with the, the sky first of all and I want the, the light coming in from, from behind this rock so I'm going to have it quite light on this side so I'm going to just use um, just white on its own to take that edge off that paper and that's going to make that um, edge of that rock outcrop stand out a lot more it's going to be a lot more contrast there and then I'm going to make it quite dramatic in the sky here I'm going to bring in some I've got um, magenta, I'm going to mix with the white bring it in from this side yellow and as you can see I've just drawn out a rough guide for myself in pencil and then I'm going to take, um, take it into a nice strong violet in the corner here now because I want to try and get some of that paper going through this I'm going to just uh, clean my brush and I'm just going to run water across this so that I can strip back the paint a bit. I don't know if you can see this, this because this um, paper's got kind of a shiny surface it's repelling the water and I've also got the, I've still got, even though I've sanded that down I've got a, an edge of the paper coming in here so what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to um, I'm going to put the paint on really thickly and I'm going to use a palette knife. So I'm almost using the paint like a filler just to get rid of this edge. 
So I'm going to go with the violet again, and the pink, and the white. Uh, that's my sky. And I'm going to go in here for the, uh, the distant, uh, distant mountains. Very distant mountains, because they look quite flat from here. And I'm going to go in again with the, the same colours, the magenta, white and violet. And I'm just going to carry on using the palette knife. almost like an indication of different fields going on in the distance there and then I've just got a, a different colour coming in in the foreground it's actually green on the photograph but I'm going to go more of a kind of a yellowy colour I think just on this this is flatter land in the in the valley just picking up a bit of the um the violet as well, it's kind of muted it a little bit more. So because this is um, further away, I want it to look a bit more blurred. There's no softer on the um, top. So there we go, it kind of disappears into the sky there. Now what I want to do with these rocks, what I've done is I've cut kind of a stencil out for a guide. So this is what, from a printout of the photograph and I'm going to put the rocks in using this as a, a guide for the edge of it. I'm using um, This is just burnt umber on my, on my brush now. I'm going to do this with a knife again. So I want to make it quite dark. And on the, the other side as well. I'm just picking up any dark paints that I've got on my palette now. So I've got red in here, I've got blue, brown, burnt sienna, violet. I'll start thinking about what I'm going to do in the middle here. In the um, in the pitch that I've got, there's a lot of uh, kind of sienna colour. I'm going to mix yellow with it, I think. Going across here. I'm going to leave these little bits of white coming through. I quite like these little sparkles. Right, I've got done the very basics of it now. I'm going to start looking at, there's a few um, rocks in the foreground here that I want to put in. So I'm going to just use, a, just using the white with some of the dark colours. One big one here. It's another that comes just off the bottom of the page, just here. And then there's one by the bottom of this rock outcrop, just on this side.
on this um, rock outcrop on this one, on this side it's got a little piece of foliage growing out of it. I'm just going to see if I can get that in with the edge of the knife. It's tiny coming up from here. That's quite cool. And I think I might leave it at that. I hope you enjoyed watching this and if you do decide to have a go at your, something yourself please do post it for us to have a look at on the VC Gallery um, page on Facebook and um, next week we're looking at St Non's so um, I hope to see you all again next week and I look forward to seeing your work. Bye!